Hi, I'm Jimmy. In this video, we're looking at Walmart stock, ticker symbol WMT. So in this video, we're going to be looking quickly at Walmart's business. We're going to look at some of the news, some of the numbers, and then see if we can come up with a fair value for Walmart stock to see if it's worth buying today. Now, this video is actually part of our series that we just restarted, where we analyze all 30 companies in the Dow Jones Industrial Average to see if we can identify the three best value stocks, dividend stocks, and growth stocks. And we already completed Disney. This one we're doing Walmart. We're just going to work our way right down the list. Now, we are going to gradually update the numbers because it's going to take a little time to get through the analysis for all 30 companies. So we're going to gradually update the numbers. So for example, we did our Disney analysis in our last video, and we got a fair value using a 7.5% required rate of return of about $104 per share. Right now, the stock's trading closer to $125, $130. The stock's dropped a bit since the release of that video. But in my mind, that's getting us closer to the fair value of the company. So as we progress through the series, we're going to gradually update the numbers to see what the new fair values come out with. That being said, let me just take a quick second to introduce you to this spreadsheet, which we are turning into a website to allow people to quickly and easily calculate the fair value of different stocks. So what we do is we punch in the ticker for the company that we're analyzing right there. The website will then pull down analyst estimates for free cash flow. Well, if we want to add our own numbers, we're welcome to do that. That will do the calculation, kick back the fair value right over here. Now we can use our own required rate of return. We can use whatever required rate of return we want. So in theory, when we update the numbers, we'll be able to punch in all 30 companies in the Dow up here. We'll be able to punch in the ticker and get an updated fair value quickly and easily for each of these companies. Now, some of the companies won't work as well as others do. For example, a company like Travelers or JP Morgan or Goldman Sachs. Well, they, you need a different valuation method. Free cash flow isn't the best valuation method. So that's another reason we're doing this series is we get to test out which other valuation methods we're going to be adding to the website. Version one, which should, should be up and running by the end of June, we're expecting to have just discounted cash flow, but then we're going to be adding every type of valuation method after that and ideally, we want the computer, the, the website, to tell you when you punch in Goldman Sachs, I want it to say, hey, that's not the best valuation method. Try this one, click a button, jump over there. So if you want to sign up to get access to this website, I will leave a link in the description below as to how to sign up. And the good news is that if you sign up now before the website goes live, it goes live again, it should be live in June. Well, we lock in your price forever. The price will never go up on you. So if you'd like to sign up, link in the description below. Okay, now let's jump into Walmart's research. So Walmart breaks their business into three different segments. Walmart Stores, Walmart International, and Sam's Club. Walmart Stores clearly dominate the overall revenue. This is revenue as of the past 12 months. But one of the questions that I found myself asking is, I know that the margins for a company like Walmart tend to be fairly low. And I was curious if Walmart was looking to expand, well, where would they push that expansion? Perhaps it's in Sam's Clubs or Walmart International. So I was able to get their margins for each of their segments over the past year. And we can see that the Walmart stores actually has the highest margins out of the three different segments that they have. So it seems that expanding any one of these business lines, if you're going to expand one of the Walmart stores, is ideally the place to go if we're looking to expand the margins. Now let's jump over to some of the recent events or recent business developments. The first one I think we should acknowledge and I think is going to be very important for a lot of the companies, a lot of companies out there in general, and that's inflationary pressure. Now, yes, this is a negative driver for Walmart's business and most businesses, but I actually think that Walmart's better positioned than some than many other types of companies to deal with some of those inflationary pressure. So there's inflationary pressure from, a, from the labor perspective, from freight shipping, you know, higher gas prices, things like that, and they're paying more per, for the product. But because Walmart is as large and as important to the creator of those products, they are going to have a bit more, let's call it leverage, than many other companies do. So I think that that, although the inflation is absolutely still going to be seen in the prices to the customer, I do think that Walmart will be able to comp be able to maintain their competitive edge of, in theory, being the lowest pri uh, the lowest price products out there. But just like we just talked about with the margins, if they're going to provide the lowest pri the lowest priced products to their customers, well, that by itself puts pressure on margins. So from a business perspective. Ideally, they want higher margins. From a customer's perspective, ideally, 
We want the price to be as low as possible. They really have to forfeit the higher margins to keep the customer base that they have. So I wouldn't expect for those margins to go up too much at do, using their current setup. That being said, some of the positive drivers are that they have Walmart Connect, Walmart Plus, and kind of a side note, overall consumer demand still seems to be there for now, which is a very good thing. But I think the real important part and the potential helper of margins over the long run would be something like Walmart Plus and Walmart Connect. So Walmart Connect, what that does is it allows businesses to advertise directly to customers. And Walmart essentially collects the advertise the revenue from that those companies advertising. So here's how it works. Walmart collects a ton of data from all of their customers. Every time somebody goes in their shop, they're building profiles of what these customers want. Well, imagine a company like Procter & Gamble or Unilever or Kellogg is sitting there going, okay, we've got a new product that we're trying to push out. Can we pay to have this promoted to the customers, whether that be online or in the stores? And essentially what Walmart has done is they say, okay, we'll set up the advertising platform for companies to more directly reach the correct consumer, the consumers that are interested in their product. Walmart gets additional revenue for that. And in theory, the company gets to sell to the right product. And ideally the customer gets the products that they're looking for. Maybe there's some sort of deal being run that allows the customer to get the products that they want at perhaps a better price. But from a business perspective, this is a good thing for Walmart because this general essentially takes the data that they've been collecting for such a long time and allows the, allows them to monetize that at much higher margins than something like the three or four or five percent that we would typically see in one of their business lines and one of their stores. And then we have Walmart Plus. Essentially, Walmart Plus is competing with Amazon Prime. If you sign up for Walmart Plus, you play, you pay a monthly or an annual subscription. Last I checked, I believe it was $100 per year. So if you were to sign up for Walmart Plus, you get, uh, you get, you know, uh, free shipping, you get free pickups in, sh in stores, you get uh, early access to deals. For example, if you're going to buy a new gaming console or something like that, well, it would be available to their Walmart Plus customers before it would be available to regular customers. So perhaps they put some aside for Walmart Plus customers. They're going after the Amazon Prime market, the Amazon Prime customers. Now, one of the things I was curious about is, well, how profitable is a company like Amazon? What are their margins like? Again, they're trying to be one of the low cost providers out there. Well, their margins are actually in the past couple of years have been slightly better than Walmart's. They're up in the five, 6% range and analysts are expecting them to go possibly as high as seven, 8%. So although they still have low margins relative to other companies or other industries, they are still doing better than Walmart from a bottom line number as far as converting their revenue into profit. So perhaps going down the road, I think that going down the road, the reason I have these under positive drivers is I think both Walmart Connect and Walmart Plus have the possibility of being a positive overall driver for Walmart. With that being said, let's now jump over to revenue. So this is their revenue going back all the way to 2006. And we can see that they have been growing. There is some gradual growth, although the growth here is by no means that fast. And we wouldn't expect it to be with a company as large as Walmart. We can see that analysts are expecting for their revenue to be up at around the $600 billion range in 2024. And then when we switch over to their margins, again, their margins have been in the three to 4% range overall of their entire business for a long time. They have started ramping up a little bit since 2020 and analysts are expecting for that uh, those margin numbers to continue to increase a bit. And from a business perspective, ideally if Walmart Plus and Walmart Connect were to continue to grow and become a larger piece of overall revenue, perhaps that could in continue to increase their margins. Although again, because Walmart is so large, I would expect those two numbers to have a somewhat minimal impact on their bottom line numbers. I don't expect them to get up in the six, 7% range. I think if they can get up to the 4% margin number, I think that would be a job well done. I think that would be impressive for them. That being said, let's jump out of our discounted cash flow calculation. So when we punch in Walmart's ticker, well, we can see that using a 7.5% required rate of return, we get a fair value of 141 bucks per share. But using the company's own weighted average cost of capital, we get a fair value of $168 per share. Right now, Walmart's trading in the $160 range. So Depending on which number we want to use, well, it seems like it could be a fair, uh, it could be a reasonable buy at this price. 
Now, for me on a personal basis, I like the 7.5% number. And I picked that number, by the way, because it's a premium over corporate bonds. So um, once, by the time we get to the end of this analysis, I'm probably going to have to increase that up to 8.5%, maybe higher, depending on where corporate bonds settle out. But once I'm done with the 30 companies of the Dow, I'll probably up it perhaps 7.5%. I mean, to 8.5%, to 7.5 to 8.5%. If I do that, well, what I'll do is I'll go back and analyze all quick all of these companies or value them again using 8.5% so I could show what the difference would be. I would do that in a video towards the end of the series. But either way, when we look at some other numbers here, I think it's important to point out they do have a dividend. Their dividend's at about 1.4%. They have, as we would expect, fairly low free cash flow to revenue. That's about 3.4%. Revenue growth, that's about 2.8%. That's about in line with what we'd expect. I'm using perpetual growth rate of 2.5%. That seems very reasonable given their revenue growth numbers. We're using analyst estimates for free cash flow. And then I just sort of grew out their free cash flow numbers from a on a linear perspective using their own historic numbers. I took the averages and just sort of carried them forward going out 10 total years. Now, there is another thing that I think is important for Walmart. So, up here, we could see that Walmart's debt actually takes away about $15, almost $16 in value because of their debt and their cash. Now, this 141 and 168 already have that debt removed. So basically, what the calculation does is it does the whole calculation, what's the company worth? And then you take debt minus cash and you subtract that value overall. I We, we added this over here, 1547 is the amount that the debt is taking away. So if we didn't include that, you would add $15.47 to the fair value of these two of our calculations. And just like that, we would have the not debt adjusted fair value. But there's another number in here. And this is one of the reasons it's so important to do the research. Another number that's not on this spreadsheet, and there's really no way to account for it. Because ultimately, what discounted cash flow is doing is it's taking, it's coming up with a fair value for the future operations of the business. It is why we have to adjust things for debt and cash. But another thing that is on Walmart's balance sheet is Walmart actually owns shares in JD.com. They actually own an 11% stake of, they own 11% of the shares on the Hong Kong exchange and 5% of the shares on the US exchange. The total value for the shares that they own is about $12 billion. Now, since that does not impact their overall operations, this fair value calculation wouldn't account for that. But it is very much a value that they have. That's They would have more cash if they didn't have that $12 billion over there. So if we wanted to account for that, and we should, well, we should add about $5. It's actually about $4.30, uh, $4 so slightly over four. So let's say 141 turns to 145, 168. We add four bucks to that, that goes up to 172. Now, those are more realistic fair values for the company. And then our question is, do we want to buy it at this level? Now, for me, I like to, I like for both the weighted average cost of capital, ideally, and the seven and a half percent to be green. So we want the current price to be less than those two numbers. It is less than, than the weighted average cost of capital. Now, they actually have a fairly low weighted average cost of capital, 6.8% is somewhat low, but it's not quite low enough for me. For me, I'd like to see this thing drop below the 140s. We'd have to figure out what our margin of safety is. Now, this is a fairly large, fairly stable company, so a margin of safety wouldn't have to be too terribly large for a stock like this. With that being said, if you'd like to get access to this website, I will leave a link in the description below. I got a link right here. And thank you so much for sticking with me all the way to the end of the video. Up next on our Dow 30 list, we've got the Walgreens Boots Alliance, Thanks, and I'll see you in the next video.